Can you hear me all right at the back? Good. <clears throat> Just recently, Cathy and I were in Wales um, at her parents' cottage in Pembrokeshire because her father was celebrating his 80th birthday. So he, he gathered together the clans from all over and we, um, well, he was so pleased to really have, it's a great thing to get to 80, isn't it? I mean, there are probably a few here at 80, aren't they? Yes. So he wanted to reflect and say, this is my big family and let's rejoice together. It was a really great time. The weather was good, which is very unusual for Wales. Very unusual. We even had a barbecue outside and no rain. But it was a time, you know, we met a lot of people and we talked a lot. It's a time, you know, when you reach 80 to really begin to reflect on what really matters in life. You know, this whole idea about what have I actually, what am I reaping in life? What have I sowed? And the last time that I was with Eddie Hyde by his bedside in the hospital in August before he died, I read to him the psalm I read earlier, Psalm 23. He wanted that psalm to be read. And it made me think what really matters in life? We should always be asking that question what really matters? We reap what we sow. And so this Psalm 23 is a very powerful metaphor of a shepherd and sheep. And I think it's a picture of what really matters in life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I read that to Eddie. And I want us to try and understand this psalm in the context in which it was written. Because we remember the psalmist was David, who later became King David. And he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd boy. And he lived in a very rural environment, countryside. He was born into that. And in that environment, sheep are really, really important. It's what you make your livelihood with. They were fundamental to life. But I believe this psalm actually traces a journey. Because when you have sheep uh, scattered over the hills, um, there's always a journey to be made. And there's a journey for each of us in our lives too. I don't know if you've heard the word transhumance. It's a fancy word. Basically it means the journey from the, the plains up into the mountain tops and sheep do that journey every year. It still happens in some parts of the world, Switzerland for example. Transhumance. And that journey is what David is describing here in the psalm. He's looking at a year in the life of a sheep. It's a picture of the shepherd leading his flock from the winter enclosure up to the summer pastures. You know, if you think about Israel, I've been to Israel a few times, and uh, you think of it as a hot, dry and dusty place, and it is. But actually in Mount Hermon, they have snow. And it can be quite cold and wintry there. They can be quite harsh, these winters. And so the sheep, at that time of year, have to be kept in a sort of stone enclosure for safety and protection. Try to imagine that. All the sheep in this big stone enclosure. But spring is coming. And the snows have melted. And the sheep now are going to be led by their shepherd to reach the best lush grass up in the tabletop. And so Psalm 23 is a story of that journey. And it takes place in the life of the sheep every single year. And it takes place in the Christian journey all the time. Imagine the start of the psalm like this. Try to imagine this. There are two sheep 
and they're talking to each other. They're talking to each other across a fence. And they're, they're, both these sheep are part of different flocks. And one sheep, it looks really well fed, well groomed, clean, happy, contented. It, it really is prospering with the care that it's getting from its loving shepherd. But on the other side of the fence, there is a poor sheep. He looks a bit scrawny. He's not well fed, really. He actually looks a bit diseased. He doesn't look very happy. And the poor sheep stands in a meadow and it's parched. The sun has scorched it. The water hole is polluted. The sheep doesn't appear to have a very kind shepherd looking after it. The well-fed sheep says, the Lord is my shepherd. Is he yours as well? I've got a wonderful shepherd. He really looks after me. Does he look after you too? And so the psalm is about the joy of being part of my shepherd's flock. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He cares for all the things that I need taken care of. All those basic needs in my life, every day, and there are many details in my life to, be, to keep me happy. To be a happy sheep, I need lots of attention. And my shepherd, he seems to know them all. He knows me. He knows when I'm scared, and he knows when I'm brave. He knows when I need certain kinds of food. He knows when I need certain kinds of medication. Do you know, my shepherd, he looks after all my needs. And Psalm 23 is a basic statement by the sheep. God will always meet your needs. He may not always give you your desires, because he knows what's best for you. But he will always meet your needs. Sheep are funny creatures. Do you know they get stressed very easily? And one of the symptoms when they get stressed is they become rigid like this. They're fearful, tense. And sheep are what are called flight animals. That means that when something comes near them, you know, something they're a bit frightened of, they run. And if you think something scary is nearby, you know, a predatory animal or something like that, you want to be stood still, very still, because that's the best position that you can run from. But a sheep needs to lie down sometimes and rest. Because if that sheep is standing all the time because of fear, and if it remains rigid all the time, it becomes exhausted. And if it's exhausted, it can suffer ill health and it may even die. Stress can do that. And uh, you, a mother sheep, will not be able to give birth while she's standing up. If she is too tense, she can't do it. So what a shepherd will do sometimes is the shepherd will come and he will go over to the sheep and he will forcibly hold the sheep down until peace comes. Until the sheep realises, yes, I'm being held down by the shepherd and if I'm being held down by the shepherd, that means the shepherd is near. And if the shepherd is near, I don't need to fear. And I can relax because he's with me. He's with me beside the still waters. 2 Timothy 1 says, For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love, and of a sound mind. Sheep cannot cross fast-flowing streams. It's just one of the facts of life. They can't do it. You imagine, they try to head into a fast-flowing stream, their wool fills up the water, they get dragged down. <clears throat> so what does the shepherd do? As the winter snows melt and the rain falls, the mountain streams begin to rise and become torrents. Now a sheep can go a long way without food, but they cannot go any distance without water. What does a shepherd do? To make it safe, he builds a dam. 
in the fast flowing water. He creates a sort of pool. And in that peaceful pool of water, the sheep can safely drink. Picture in your mind's eye the sheep coming to the stream and it's safe now. Drinking quietly beside a pool of peaceful water. God loves you very much. You are very precious to him. You are close to his heart. He wants you to drink peacefully. And that's what you need in the early part of the year as a sheep. When the lambing season comes, you need some fresh green pastures, some lush grass, some peaceful water and calm surroundings. Those are the circumstances in which the sheep can really feel secure and they can then have their lambs and they can look after them. <clears throat> but very soon after the sheep, after the lambs are born, they are prepared for a journey. And the journey is along a well-worn path. And if any of you have ever walked in Wales or the Lake District, gone off the tarmac, you will see that there are lots of little single tracks in the, um, in the grass. Because sheep are very obedient creatures and they like to follow one after the other, one after the other, behind the shepherd. The shepherd doesn't need to drag them. He brings them. He calls them by name. He says, my sheep hear my voice. He calls each one by name. And do you know, Eddie Hyde was called by Jesus when he was in his mid-fifties. He became a Christian then. And he trusted Jesus to be his shepherd. He put his trust in the shepherd. And over the years, a, a, an intimate relationship took place between that lamb and his shepherd. Eddie could say, the Lord is my shepherd. And as the sheep are going, there's a lead sheep and it has a bell around its neck. So at night time, if the, if the shepherd cannot be seen, the sheep often listen for the sound of the bell and they know they follow behind the lead sheep. And the voice of the shepherd comforts them. Do you often hear, as it were, God's voice guiding you? On your journey, do you know him? And the sheep follow one, one follows one tail, one follows the other tail, and they keep going on. And it may be dark, but they're safe, because they're following the shepherd. And me to walk does make. Within the path of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. But friends, we all want those mountaintop experiences, don't we? We all want to reach that high point in life where you can really see what's to be seen. A vision, a revelation maybe. What's God doing in my life? What's he mapped out for me? But we have to realise you can't get to a mountain top unless you go via the valley. And the higher the mountain top you want to get to, the deeper the valley has to be. And as you've started that journey and you want to be up there in the mountains of Judah, Mount Carmel, which I understand looks like a tabletop, and there's grass up there and it's lush and it's there like a table, if you want to get there, the only way to go is through the valley. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow. But in the valley, there are predators. That's where there are lions and bears and wolves and that's where there are lots of dark places and holes and caves. And the valley can be a scary place. There may be a predator hanging behind that rock waiting for you. <coughs> the streams are swollen, it's dangerous. The snow is melting and you begin to tremble and you maybe have fear for your safety and you think, what is lying ahead? What's up in the shadows? What am I going to face? Is that the howl of a wild animal? And so for the safety of the sheep, the shepherd gathers them together every night in a prearranged spot. And he surrounds it by a circle of stones. But there's a gap at the front, the entrance place. And you know what? 
The shepherd lies in front of the gap and he is the door. No one is going to harm those sheep because he is the door. The shepherd lies across. And in John 10 verse 7, Jesus said, I am the door for the sheep. And the sheep know they can lie down in peace and safety and sleep because the shepherd is with them. Now I lay me down in the peace of sleep because God, you keep me. Is Jesus your place of safety? Is he your place of safety? But the valley can be difficult. Food is scarce. There's not much to eat. <coughs> there may be lots of water, but not much to eat. <coughs> and the valley just seems to go on and on and on. And you think, is this ever going to end? Is it worth it? Is the slog worth doing? It seems so hard in this valley. I was promised lush grass on the mountain pastures. But at the moment it just feels like winter. Can I carry on? And sometimes in the valley, the sheep may wander and get caught in a thorn bush. The sheep sees an opening and there's some food there, so it goes. And it goes into the briar bush. And it went in, but it can't get out because it's caught. Imagine that. What does the shepherd do? <clears throat> well, he has several things with him. Tools of the trade, you might say. A sling, a rod, and a staff. And sometimes, if a wayward sheep doesn't respond and get back into line in a place of safety, the shepherd, he takes a stone and he slings it in the direction of the sheep. The idea is to startle the sheep, say, come on, come back. Sometimes he has to be more firm than that. <clears throat> you know, there are some sheep who consistently need rescuing because they always get stuck under thorn bushes. They're always out on the limb and the shepherd has to hike them out with his staff. They're always misbehaving. Always end up on rocky ledges <clears throat> because they wandered. And time and time again the shepherd has to say, come to me. If you want to survive, come to me. Sometimes, God has to discipline the sheep in order to keep it alive and to preserve it. Sometimes the discipline is not easy. Let me read this to you. From Hebrews chapter 12. This is what God tells us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5, 6, and 7. This is what it says. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when he reproves you, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastises every son whom he receives. If you are feeling disciplined as a Christian, if God is having to deal with you quite harshly, to bring you round to get his attention. He's doing it because he loves you. He is not prepared. The shepherd is not prepared to allow the sheep to wander aimlessly. And which of us here have never wandered aimlessly? Which of us here has never had to be hoiked out of a thorn bush? <clears throat> the shepherd knows there are some dangerous predators out there and he cares for us so much. He will sometimes even bring a severe mercy to us and discipline us in order to gather the lambs back to himself and carry them close to his heart. And sometimes you will see that picture of a shepherd carrying a sheep on his back. Maybe that sheep has broken a leg or hurt itself. But the shepherd feeds it and looks after it. And you know, when that sheep's leg is better, they're the ones that walk closest with the shepherd. They never leave his side. And friends, if you can think of a Christian that you really respect <clears throat> and you notice that they walk close with the Lord, then look at them again. You may notice that the sheep who walk most closely with the shepherd walk with a limp. 
And people who walk most closely with a good shepherd walk with a limp because sometimes he has had to exercise a severe mercy on us because he loves us. And as I conclude, do you notice something about this psalm? It begins with one sheep talking to another about, about the shepherd. But as they enter the valley, the sheep aren't talking about the shepherd. They're talking to the shepherd. I will fear no evil because you are near me. It's often in the valley hard times that you get to really know God. The valley is hard. It's a place of difficulty. It may be poor health. It may be financial difficulty. It may be family stresses. But if you are the good shepherd's sheep, he will look after you in the valley. And Eddie Hyde trusted God as the good shepherd. And in his final years, which were not easy years, he held on to his good shepherd until the end. And as we cannot get to the mountain top without passing through the valley, we can't get to know God truly unless we face difficult times in the journey. And if you are going through a difficult time right now, yes, there is a mountain top, but the valley experience is there for a purpose. The purpose it was intended. It may be a certain season of your life. The mountain top will come. But it may be that in the valley you learn to love your Lord more closely. Because he loves you. And there have been times in my Christian journey when I have wandered away. I've let God down. I've grieved the Holy Spirit. But I have found God to be gracious. And he's always brought me back. I found him to be gentle, full of forgiveness. And I love him for that. And I pray that you will find the same. And if I have needed discipline from God, then I prefer to be a chastened saint than a carefree sinner. And if God is disciplining you now, it's because he loves you. Trust him. But after the valley comes, you break out of the darkness into the sunlit uplands and it's springtime. And the shepherd has been here many times and he will feed you on the best grass. So as I finish, may I ask you this. Where are you on your journey with God? Where are you on your journey with God? Are you still in that winter enclosure where it's cold and empty and you're relying upon your own goodness and your own strength? Can I say to you this morning, the Good Shepherd, Jesus, loves you very much and he wants to bring warmth into your life. He wants to forgive you for your sins and he has made this possible because he took your sins on himself. So don't waste any more time. If you haven't started your spiritual journey, start it this morning. He says, I am the Good Shepherd. Have you ever asked him to be your Good Shepherd? There's a saying, it will profit us nothing if at the end of time we discover Jesus is a good shepherd. If during our lifetime we never heard his voice and we never followed him. So what is the promise of Psalm 23? The promise is, if the Lord is your shepherd, you will have no spiritual lack of any sort. There will be abundant green pastures and clean waters. There will be new paths into fresh fields and there will be safe summers on the high mountain and he will not forsake you in the valley he will not forsake you in the valley because he's been there many times and he can deal with anything the valley throws at him or throws at us and Eddie is a living testimony to that <coughs> I finish with this little story <coughs> in England one weekend many years ago a famous actor attended a weekend house party and the people asked him to read something to them and so he decided to read Psalm 23. They had never heard it read so beautifully before. The diction was perfect. The cadence of the voice, just right. The tone, the speed, the emotion, perfect. The Lord is my shepherd. And after he'd finished, there was a thunderous applause 
clapping, clapping. And there was an old minister sitting there. And the actor turned to him and said, Sir, <coughs> you must have read Psalm 23 many times. Would you like to read it to us? And at first the old minister declined because he was shy and embarrassed. But the actor was a kindly man and said, Please, sir, we would like to hear you read Psalm 23. The old man didn't need the Bible because he quoted it, the psalm, off by heart. And when he finished, there was no clapping. Everybody sat quiet. And the actor leaned forward and said, <coughs> Sir, I know the psalm. You know the shepherd. And Eddie Hyde knew his shepherd. And he knew that he, is, he was absolutely sure to place all his trust in the shepherd. And if you do not know the shepherd this morning, I am very sorry for you. I am truly sorry for you. Because it's a terrible thing to be in this world without a shepherd, without a guide, and without a saviour. And I pray the Lord Jesus, the good shepherd, will open your eyes and your heart. And that one day, very soon, you will say, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Let's just pause for a moment before we sing our final hymn. Father, we just pray, use these poor words to glorify yourself, Lord, and may your name be glorified in our lives as we seek, Lord, day by day to follow the good shepherd the lover of our souls.